It's a beautiful early evening in Los Angeles. Temperature in the 70s, sunny skies for the moment as we approach the twilight period. The lights will not take full effect for another hour and a half or so. Dodger Stadium filling up for game one of the National League Championship Series as the New York Mets take on the Los Angeles Dodgers. And welcome to Los Angeles, everyone. I'm Al Michaels for Game 1 and a great matchup coming your way tonight with Dwight Gooden taking on Oral Hershiser. One thing is for certain, a week from Saturday, the World Series will begin either here or at Shea Stadium in New York, and it's the first team to win four games between now and then. How did these two teams get here this year? Well, the Mets were the consensus choice to win it in the National League East. And their season was really a three-act play. They opened to rave reviews because they were 30 and 11. And then they got on the treadmill and played about 500 ball for two and a half months. And then they turned it on at the end and blew away Pittsburgh and Montreal, winning by 15 in the East and winning 100 games overall. The Dodgers, meanwhile, even after they had picked up Kirk Gibson, were a consensus choice to finish fourth or fifth in the National League West. There were two guys who had to have good years for the Dodgers to win, you would have thought. Fernando Valenzuela was one, but he was five and eight and spent a lot of time on the disabled list. Pedro Guerrero was another. He spent a lot of time on the DL, and you all know, of course, he is in St. Louis. So they have done it with Gibson and a lot of unsung heroes like Brian Holton and Alejandro Pena and Dave Anderson, and one very well-heralded hero who ended the regular season on a spectacular note. Oral Hershiser. We'll talk about him when we come back. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. And by Acura Legend and Integra. Precision crafted performance exclusively at your Acura dealer. Back live at Dodger Stadium. I'm not sure the full magnitude of a feat accomplished in September can be truly appreciated for probably a number of reasons. The National Football League had opened its season. The pennant races were not compelling, and a lot of people were paying attention to the Olympics, and a lot of what took place took place at night on the West Coast and was reduced to the small type in Eastern newspapers. But what Oral Hershiser did in September was amazing. 56, a revered number in baseball, synonymous with Yankee slugger Joe DiMaggio, who in 1941 hit safely in 56 consecutive games, a record considered by many the toughest to break. 58 another magical number in baseball. In 1968, Don Drysdale pitched 58 consecutive scoreless innings, a feat that seemed to be unbreakable and even unapproachable. Oral Hershiser was nine years old in 1968 when Drysdale set his record. 20 years later, Hershiser is pitching for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And 20 years later, Don Drysdale is broadcasting for the Dodgers and watched Hershiser challenge his record last Wednesday. So two outs in the seventh. And Hershiser one out away from putting 56 scoreless innings in the book. Hershiser sets and delivers at a bouncer up the middle. Griffin takes him right to the bag, steps on second. The side is retired. And Hershiser has 56 innings in the book. Oral tied the mark two innings later, and the streak continued into the bottom of the 10th. The 10th inning started with, again, a standing ovation from the San Diego crowd, which was outstanding, and then it really went downhill from there because Marvell win. I struck him out on a curveball, and the ball bounced over Sosha's head, and I've got a man on first, and I'm thinking, oh, no, I've got to really bear down now because I'm going to give him four outs. First guys are ready, and the one-two pitch is swung on, a fly ball to right. Gonzalez backs up, he's got it, and Hershiser has the record. This is his night. I just want to reiterate my congratulations to a great guy. They call him the Bulldog here, and I think all of you have been able to witness that and see why, and, and uh, at least we kept it in the family. That's the big thing. 
I didn't really know about Don Drysdale until I became a Dodger. But since I've become a Dodger, Fernando has always been compared to Koufax in that era. And now that I've come along behind Fernando, I've always been compared to Drysdale. And so it's Drysdale, Koufax, Hershiser, Valenzuela, and to, for me to even get close to the record was just an honor because to be up there with those names of Hubble and Drysdale and Gibson and Walter Johnson, I, I, it was just, they asked me, what's your name going to be like at the top of those record books? And I said, long. <laughs> And now live at Dodger Stadium, here is Don Drysdale. Don, try to put into words what it feels like to be an athlete getting into a zone that nobody's been to before. Well, Al, you know, it's amazing. You get out there, and really the concentration that you're thinking about, you really don't know if you're in a spring training ballpark, if there's 500, 5,000, or 50,000, or anything like that. You get out there, and things just, it's just your mind keeps working in the right direction. And all of a sudden, when you start getting yourself into a mental frame of mind, it becomes then a physical aspect of pitching. And, of course, as we have talked about many times, once you get that fine line and that fine group, you can throw the ball, I'd say, nine times out of ten, and maybe more so exactly where you want it. How did you feel when that string was finally snapped? Well, it didn't really, I was happy for him. First of all, Oral is really a good kid. And, you know, I think it's everybody, every professional's dream, as far as a baseball player is concerned, Al, is to get to the Hall of Fame. I'm sure it helped me get to the Hall of Fame. It was sitting on the shelf for 20 years getting dusty. And if it can help Oral and hers, his family like it helped mine, hey, go get it. Appreciate the getting lined up. Thank you. Thank you. So, we are set for game one of the National League Championship Series, and there is Hershiser warming up to face Dwight Gooden. Back in L.A., time to meet the starting lineups, and for that, let's go to the public address announcer at Dodger Stadium, Nick Nixon. And now let's welcome tonight's starting lineup for the Eastern Division champion, New York Mets. Manager, Davey Johnson. Leading off, number one, center fielder, Mookie Wilson. Batting second, number nine, third baseman, Greg Jeffries. Batting third, number 17, first baseman, Keith Hernandez. Batting fourth, number 18, right fielder, Daryl Strawberry. Batting fifth, number 22, left fielder, Kevin McReynolds. Batting sixth, number 20, shortstop, Howard Johnson. Batting seventh, number eight, catcher, Gary Carter. Batting eighth, number six, second baseman, Wally Backman. Warming up at the Mets bullpen, and batting ninth, number 16, pitcher, Doc Gooden. Now the starting lineup of your Western Division champion, Los Angeles Dodgers. Manager, Tommy Lasorda. Leading off, number three, second baseman, Steve Sachs. Batting second, number 22, first baseman, Franklin Stubbs. Batting third, number 23, left fielder, Kirk Dixon. Batting fourth, number five, right fielder, Mike Marshall.
batting fifth, number 31, center fielder, John Shelby. Batting sixth, number 14, catcher, Mike Sosha. Batting seventh, number 33, third baseman, Jeff Hamilton. Batting eighth, number seven, shortstop, Alfredo Griffin. And warming up in the Dodgers' bullpen, and batting ninth, number 55, pitcher, Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to the home plate area. Tonight's colors will be presented by representatives of the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. To honor America, please rise for our national anthem, And so it is time to get it going from Los Angeles. The meeting going on right now at home plate prior to game one of the National League Championship Series on a gorgeous day. Twilight in Los Angeles with temperatures in the mid 70s. The New York Mets, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Al Michaels with Tim McCarver and Jim Palmer. Four victories for a pennant. That's what these teams are looking for. It's the 20th league championship series since baseball split into divisional play in 1969. It's the first time the Mets have faced the Los Angeles Dodgers. And Tim, obviously, postseason baseball is different than regular season baseball. How so in the playoffs, in your estimation? Well, I'll tell you one thing. The, the only thing thicker than the early morning fog here in Los Angeles is the tension in the air. And believe me, it is bountiful tonight. And I'll tell you why. I think it's the numbers of the season, the numbers of games in the season, compared to the numbers of games during the playoff. 162 games played during the season. Four games have to be won during the playoffs. And that teetering, frail bridge that crosses over to the World Series is what one of the two teams, either the Dodgers or the Mets, have to cross. And I think because you have to win four games, the players have to take almost a football mentality. And baseball is not like that. It's more of a leisurely pace. And I think the very fact that you have to win four out of seven, the players having to take this football mentality, if you have a bad week during the season, you say get them next week. If you have a bad week during the playoffs, mm -hmm. forget it. That's the great thing about it. Every pitch, every at-bat is magnified. Let me turn to Jim Palmer and talk about the fact People always wonder how did the two teams match up during the regular season. Well, the Mets bombed the Dodgers. They won 10 out of 11. The players publicly like to say that doesn't mean anything, does it? Well, I, don't, I think it does, and I think that's why Steve uh, Sachs came up to me, who's the second baseman for the, uh, the Dodgers, and said, do you think we have a chance? You know, we got to beat 10 out of 11. Well, the way they did it, I think, put a lot of doubt in the Dodgers' mind. If you look at the Mets, they could beat you three ways. They can beat you with their offense. They led the National League in, in run score. They can beat you with their pitching, the best pitching team in the National League, and they made the least amount of errors. I look at the Dodgers, and I look at the month of September. They only hit 205, the lowest batting average of any team in the major leagues. So really what it comes down to, Al, is Oral Hershiser. He said this is an attitude adjustment game. He said, change our attitude, let us know that we can beat the Mets, and let them know that they can be beaten. Very important game, and it goes back to really 86 playoff. I think they don't, I'm talking about the Mets, they don't want to see Hershiser three times. So they better win in six if they're going to win. And they figure to if the series goes seven. So here we go. Game one from Los Angeles coming right up. The National League Championship Series. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today Chevrolet. By Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Goodyear Eagle Tires. Goodyear, because there really is a difference. And by Rolaids at Essie. Relief, you know how to spell it.
a real nice gesture moments ago. Fernando Valenzuela is not eligible for the playoffs. He's not on the 24-man postseason roster. He's had shoulder problems, pitched twice in September, but the Dodgers brought him out to throw out the ceremonial first pitch.